Beyond Aero, a tech startup aiming to build hydroelectric aircraft, has raised $20 million from investors in a recent funding around uh, which was announced this week. Now, the co-founder and CEO of the company, uh, Loa Gelatin, spoke to Rise News uh, correspondent uh, Rotus Oduri at the Future Investment Initiative in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. All right, we of course arise news here in Riyadh at the Future Investments Institute, which of course is the eighth edition. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the interview that I have been looking forward to all week. All right, it's all about technology. Uh, and we have a founder and innovator here with us to talk about uh, electric aerospace, electric vehicles flying, right? Basically, electric planes. Um, Eloa Gilton, did I get that yes. right? Yes. The co-founder, CEO of Beyond Aero is with us. Thank you so much for talking My to pleasure. our Rise News. And it's good, to, it's good to have you here. So seeing as we're the you know, future uh, investment institute, what, what does this gathering mean for you as an entrepreneur and a startup in the tech space? Thank you so much for receiving me today. So as you said, we are building a hydrogen electric private aircraft because I believe aviation will be electric one day. It's, it's, the question is when. Um, so we are focusing in every different department of on the entire world of who is leading any technology. And FRI, as you may know very well, is one of the different players uh, actively investing, looking at the state of the art technology. And so we are here to discover this industry. Now, we understand you've signed letters of intent uh, for some number of aircraft. The valuation is anywhere from 550 to $680 million. So wh while you're here, are you seeking investment um, for your company? Yes, for different reasons. Investment is always part of the, of the discussion. Also some potential clients partners, and also discover what is the state of the art, where, who is doing what, what's the latest news. So yes, I am looking for investment, we are looking for clients, we are looking for partners. Um, just to announce what happened a few days ago, that we actually have more than a, almost a billion dollars in letter of intent now, uh, for different size of jets. Uh, we have airlines, we have corporates and ultra high net worth individuals. And a lot of different actors, singers, athletes are looking to fly more electric. And so that's why uh, we are here today and uh, discussing about this important topic, uh, part of the transition uh, of the climate. Fantastic. So almost a billion dollars in letters of I mean, intent. That is fantastic and great news for you. So I want you to talk to us about the use case of um, building an electric uh, aircraft that also runs on you know, hydrogen propulsion. So you've got you know, hydrogen fuel cells and batteries. Can you talk yes. about the, the, the use case for that? Yes, we say hydrogen electric because it's electric engines. So we have two electric engines, but they are not powered from lithium batteries. They are powered from fuel cells, like you said. So it's gas hydrogen stored in tanks that goes through a fuel cell. The fuel cell is taking oxygen from the air hydrogen and creating the molecule of water, H2O. And through that process, it generates a lot of heat. That's a problem, but we are dealing with that. And a lot of electricity. And so we use this electricity to power the electric engine. So it's hydrogen electric, zero direct emission, since we only release water. I'm saying direct because the question is, can we have decarbonized hydrogen so that's another scope two and three. Um, but at the scale of the aircraft itself, it's gonna be zero direct emission, fully electric. But we are using hydrogen because it's allowing us to go five times further away than lithium batteries. So the goal is to combine the zero direct emission with a use case with where we can have more range. So the market is going to be, the, in Europe, for example, we can reach 1,500 kilometers. So that's 800 nautical miles. So the idea is to touch all of the European capitals. London, Paris, Geneva, Berlin, Madrid. That's the market we are targeting at first. And, and thank you for mentioning that. So I understand you're targeting about 2030 or so to have an aircraft that could fit about eight people, so, so you know, I guess that private jets. Is, is that the space you'll be focusing on playing in, you know, I guess in the, in the medium to mm -hmm. short term? As a start, yes. Um, first of all, because we did a different market study, and the, what, the client who is willing to pay 
a bit more than usual to fly electric are the private jets users because they have a public image, some care for the environment and they want to make an effort. Private jets emit two tons of CO2 per hour. So it's 10 times more than commercial airline. Um, so the first argument is really the need of the market. The second is because of the maturity of the technology. Uh, today we rely on, the, on a lot of suppliers. We buy the fuel cell, we buy the tanks, we buy the electric engine and such ma technology is mature for a certain size of power, about from one to two megawatts. Above that, it's, it's gonna take more time. So that's why also we are doing a small, relatively small aircraft, six to eight passenger. And the latest argument will be about certification. It's easier and faster to certify a smaller aircraft than a bigger one. So the strategy of the company is to start with a light private jet so six to eight, we have two configurations, um, a club or a club seating or more uh, two and two. Um, but then the idea will be to scale. Uh, eventually, we have my entire life to do that. Uh, I'm, I have more than 40 years in front of me to, to build different size of aircraft. But the strategy first is starting with a pragmatic use case where the technology exists, is reliable, and we can certify it. Perfect. And thanks for mentioning, you know, aiming for larger aircraft. I think uh, there's a, uh, an Aer electric aerospace alliance or so uh, destination uh, 2050. I've actually a European net zero uh, alliance that they're saying that um, it's going to be just intra-European small aircraft flights for now for electric planes. And, and, and what I wanted to ask is, guess, to get to the larger commercial extra, in terms of the size of the fuel cells and so on and so forth, is that realistic? How, how do we get there? So Airbus right now yeah. is working on a hydrogen aircraft. Okay. And that's why it's not just about us, not just about Beyond Aero. We have big traditional players willing to bet billions per year on hydrogen. So that means hydrogen infrastructure, that means hydrogen certification, that means hydrogen different fuel cells component and certification. So we can scale the technology to a certain point, but fuel cell will be able, so today we are using gas. If we switch to liquid, we can have even bigger aircraft and bigger range, but eventually to scale even more, we get, you're gonna need to turn to combustion chamber. So burning the hydrogen, not using a fuel cell. That's why I say hydrogen electric, because you can also use hydrogen as a, as a combustion, com combustion chamber. And so Airbus right now is working on both mm. uh, um, combustion chamber and fuel cells. So it's scalable, but you need to adapt a bit the concept of the aircraft depending on the market. Yeah, you mentioned certification earlier, and that it's easier to get a smaller plane certified as opposed to a larger one. So what's been your interaction with regulators so far? How's that going? It's going well, and that's why I was saying uh, Airbus is working on it. So that means IASA and F FAA are also working on hydrogen certification. And thank, thank you for that, because as a startup, it would not be um, realistic to be alone on one technology. We need the entire ecosystem to pivot. And since Airbus is leading the way, that's why, you, like you said, it's going to start more in Europe first. Also, that's where the culture of clients are more sensitive to ecology right now compared to different positions in the world. Mm. So we think Europe is the right combination of the key engineering aerospace engineers we have in Toulouse, in France, thanks to Airbus, hydrogen laboratories, IASA working on hydrogen. So we've discussed for sure for a long time already uh, with different entities, um, nationally and inter internationally. Yeah. And uh, it's going to happen. Yeah. So the question is when, what's the, what's the timeline, under which requirement. And so we are co-defining with different actors the requirements safety means of compliance around hydrogen. Fantastic. Yeah. I have to talk about you now. Um, <laughs> you are under 30. Um, you're playing in a space that is dominated by, by men. Um, your, your story is so inspirational to, to, to young girls, right? Because there's just not that many in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering. Math. So um, how'd you get into this field? What, what, <laughs> what, what, what's your story? Uh, the long story short, um, I. I don't 
know why, but I've always wanted to be an astronaut. An astronaut. Yes, wow. I always looked at the stars when I was a child and, and dreamed to be, dreamt to, to go on the moon and fly and then to become a fighter pilot. And then so it's not coming from my parents. They are not in this industry. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that was my dream. And so I was not raised defined by gender. Uh, and so I think it's in the core value of who I am that I can dream and at least dare to try to reach this dream. The path is going to be long. We'll have swoop, loop, back and forth. But the minimum I think I can do is at least to dare to dream and, uh, and not let my gender define what I can or cannot do. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, I mean, for the dream to be real, you have to be educated and you've got quite a um, impressive education and uh, resume. Can you speak about the education system in, in, in France? Like, you know, it was Toulouse, right? I, yes. I think where you got educated. How, how, was, how has that helped in trying and how would that help as far as education in trying to get others to follow your path? Yeah, I feel like education is a big part uh, of who are you going to become, but it's not, it's, it's a key to empowerment but it's not at the roots. The roots are the values of the education of your family, not just university. It's, it has to be both, to be combined. So first of all, being able to dream at two years old to be an astronaut, my family allowed me that. So first of all, it's about the core value that you carry, and then education is an empowerment of how do you deploy those values and those visions. So yes, I've studied aerospace engineering in Toulouse. I left home at 17 saying, I will become an astronaut. And I went there, uh, then in Paris for a few years about entrepreneurship, and then in the US, uh, in Berkeley. So I do believe education is key, and universities are um, a tromp trampoline, if I can say that. It's helping you to scale faster, um, and that's really the key to empowerment. It's give you courage, and confidence to dare to dream even bigger and to realize your dream. Mm, fantastic. Look, hello, uh, Guilton, uh, the CEO, co-founder of uh, Beyond Aero. Great story. We're going to be following up with you, uh, with you and how your, your journey goes to developing this aircraft. Thank you so much for talking to Thank you to for your time. Arise News. Appreciate <laughs> your time. Thank you.